Yeah, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> I'm going to talk about black unity or the fact that there probably never will be any. And I am having a bad day today. Nothing but idiot after idiot after idiot today. Whether idiots are driving or idiots are doing some other shit. Trying to go through a fucking drive through Not even the drive through to get the fuck out of the place. And I wasn't even in the drive through Some white dude. No car in front of him. I blow the horn lightly. You know, light uh, tap is, can you please move? So he doesn't. He, he stays there. Then I blow it a little stronger, which means move. He stays there. Then I blow it stronger, which means get the fuck out the way. I said, now it's one of these guys today. It's some guy I didn't know. I didn't know who the fuck he was, white or black. And at first, so I said, then I saw that he was white. So I said, let me get out the car. And here's where my size comes into play. But. No matter how pissed I was, so you got to think though at all times, because you know I don't I don't like people fucking around for no reason. I don't know this guy. Just move your fucking car so I can get the fuck out the way. Bad enough I had to return the fucking item because I asked for no fucking pickles, no fucking onions. And every fucking time I ask for no fucking pickles, no fucking onions, they keep putting pickles and fucking onions on them. And then they want to explain to me. Well, the receipt says no, no, uh, only onions or no onions. I said, why don't you stop putting motherfuckers who can't speak English in the fucking drive through? That would make more sense. If they can't understand the fucking language, how the fuck can they receive the fucking order? I mean, who the fuck is the genius who does that? Can't understand that shit. I mean, the fuck, man. Take them to a fucking English class instead of trying to have them learn on a job fucking stupid so what I did I said fuck it I said I ain't gonna have them remake it even though that probably cost them a little more money I just said fuck get my goddamn money back yeah damn it I see why some people get <laughs> pissed off in those fucking videos when they put pickles on their shit man I mean goddamn man if you don't want pickles on it that's saving them money because they get more pickles uh in their stock I mean, damn. Not everybody wants some fucking pickles on a fucking hamburger. And the only reason I said no onions because they always put too much on them. And this is what happens when they got these fucking Mexicans making all this shit. Anyway, tell this white boy, come on, man, what the fuck? They always fuck around. But see, no matter how pissed I was, I wasn't as pissed as to the maximum because if I was pissed to the maximum I would have broken his window dragged his ass out of the car and whipped his ass that's, that's what I would have been doing but I said move that shit he's like there's a car in front. I said motherfucker you blind ain't no fucking car in front of you the car moved the fuck up now you can move what, what, what's, your, what's your fucking excuse and now this is the key thing I gotta tell black people when you get pissed off with some I don't even want to call this road rage but it might be when white boys try to be funny like that, what I didn't do is get right, go right up and rush his window. That's a key thing because I know how they do. They might be holding something and then use that as the excuse. So never do that. Never do that. No matter how pissed you get, just make sure you don't do that. Now, if he gets out the car, then that, that's, that's time for you to whip some ass. But don't rush the, the, the window like that. Don't, don't go right to it. That's why I stayed back. Got enough so he could see that I'm pissed off. But instead of arguing with, with me, just move. All you got to do is hit the fucking pedal. And everybody else is looking like, how come this guy isn't moving? Why is he arguing? And then you got people, then once I leave, you got people doing crazy shit in the street. I'm like, man, there must be a lot of people that's not from around here. <laughs> you got dimwit after dimwit. I said, man, fuck this. I said, when there's too many crazy people out here, I got to get out of here. 
add that to <laughs> the bullshit. I was on some bullshit show, Ghetto Hood Show. Which, uh, if you notice, I'm trying to stay away from those types of programming. Because I realize, you know what I noticed, man, on YouTube, man? I told you, man, there's a lot of fucking coons. But they all seem to come under the guise of black unity or wanting black unity or loving black people. But their actions show that they can't stand black people. This is why when you see me get on whoever's channel. I try to show what my actions that black people need to at least respect one another. That's why I always show them respect. And I never name call unless they start that shit with me. Respect first. So you got to you can't say you want black unity. And you can't even respect black people. And I'm not talking about that superficial respect that a lot of black people do. Hey, brother. You know, you know, they try that passive aggressive shit. Hey, brother, what you need to do. Is to stop doing this and stop doing that. Or you need to come to this and come to that. That's that passive aggressive type of bullshit. Trying to command your, 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 your mind. And tell you what to do. I don't. See I don't try to tell people what to do. Because I know people are going to do what they're going to do. No matter what. That's why you never hear me say people stop doing the weed. Stop drinking. Stop doing that. Because I know. Weed ain't uh, an activity. It's a fucking addiction. Same thing with everything else you got to do. So that's why you don't. You never hear me saying uh, stop all that shit. Then. You got people who. I don't know what it is. But these people. It's, it's like black people. I think these ghetto fired hood black people. I really don't think that they have anything else to present on YouTube. That's what I think. So they just copy the next man, which is, in this case, people like Saw Netter, because they see he's hood and he has a fairly successful YouTube career, but they fail to realize that he's also a coon agent. Like I said in so many videos in the past. So he has his built in audience any damn way. You know? This is the problem. You try to. That's why I do things and say things the way I say them. Because I know after a while, even the nice ones, they're going to show their true colors after a while. That's why I like to hear people talk and talk and talk before I I'm vetting people. That's what I'm doing now. I, you, I'm getting tired of fucking with Negroes. And excuse me, I'm a little pissed off today from other shit that happened earlier, especially with that white boy. My man doesn't understand. He was close. He was close. <laughs> <laughs> all I can say to people I, I hate to go back to that But all I can say to people when, when you're on the road Try not to fuck around with people you don't know That's all I can say And I don't have a gun on me And that's why Because that's the time <laughs> I'm, Matter of fact I ain't even gonna say no more But Don't fuck around with people you don't know that, that, That's all I'll say now you can say, hey, you were fucking around with people, but he was fucking around with me. You're in the drive through There's nothing, in, no car in front of you. Move, get what you got to get, and move on. So I can get the fuck out of there. Why are you trying to keep me in there? Anyway. Aside from fucking uh, around with white people, you got to keep on dealing with niggas. That's why I try to stay out of the fucking hood 
arena. And the same people who you point out are coon agents. Are the same crazy people who manipulate the weak minded, like weak minded uh, hooker types, drug addict, uh, skinks. They manipulate those types. It's frustrating, but fuck it. And she's that weak in the mind, fuck it. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about, other people do. And I'm not saying no names because these uh, filthy individuals don't need any shine. And I was going to do a show on it, actually. But I wanted somebody on and I didn't hear back from them. So I'm doing this instead, even though, I, I mean, it's still time. But in a way, it's, it's probably better I didn't hear back from them. So then that way I don't have to present my that shit on my uh, channel even though I'm talking about it now but I'm talking about it but I ain't showing nothing but I will touch on some things and um you got 50 year old 60 year old Negroes who claim to know a lot of people big shots in the Uncle Tom community name dropping a lot I know this person. My father know that person. Well, motherfucker. Well, I should say the B word. But I try to stay away from that. You, you notice I don't really call women that. Unless I'm provoked. I'm not going to do that. In this instance. If you know all these people. See, first of all, let me tell you this. These hood Negroes. All they do is drink, smoke all day, snort coke, get loud, and act like they're still in the seventh grade. They dropped out of high school, probably dropped out of middle school. And like I say again, only because of the fucking internet. And in this case, this more uh, recent times only because of YouTube did these motherfuckers even in a, uh, in a smartphone did these dummies actually even try to get a computer because half of them couldn't fucking read and obviously if you're going to get on the internet you're forced to read that's the good part about the internet you you if you couldn't read, you ain't got no choice but to learn how to read in order to use the shit. Unless you just want to watch videos. But even when you watch videos, you got to at least be able to read the titles. So that's the good part. It forced some of these hood uh, urchins, to, urchins to just uh, learn how to read after they dropped out of high school and shit. Which I did too. But I went back and got uh, got a college degree. But I knew how to read, even though very well, even though I did drop out of high school. That's why when I did drop out, my being able to read very well allowed me to get paid. <laughs> and I ain't saying how. It allowed me to get paid. But one thing I never did was, you know, do drugs all day and shit like that. I know my mother didn't like the fact that I did drop out. But she should be happy about the fact that I wasn't smoking weed and, and selling drugs and doing all that kind of crazy shit. These other people, they drop out doing drugs all day. Then they get on YouTube, hear they are talking about fucking religion and, and Egypt and all that kind of bullshit that doesn't do nothing for nobody and then they start saying yeah I can be smart too let me start talking about that shit I want to get involved okay because some people have knowledge of shit 
of Bibles and shit or some type of knowledge. So they think, okay, yeah, I can do that. Thing when then when things go a little deeper, then all of a sudden it's argument time, it's name calling time, typical hood shit. And the problem with a lot of these dim with it ghetto hoes. So I won't use the B word, but I can use that word. Is they want to say face when they're stupid. So that's why they scream and yell, cut you off, call you names. You know, the usual ghetto tricks that we're all aware of. You know, they, they like to think that they know everything. And then you got other crazed maniacs who get jealous because they like to think that they know everything, but they don't know everything. They're just con men trying to pull a con on people because they're sick. That's a problem. And then they get jealous of other people because other people actually do research and are knowledgeable about shit. And know what the fuck they talking about when they talking about it. And they get jealous. They get jealous because some people can handle themselves when they go into any arena. And then when you present something to somebody. And then people start asking you questions about the shit. You get flustered. And you don't know what the fuck you talking about. You keep tripping over your own words because you're fucking lying. That's why. And then when it takes other people who ask questions like me to confront your monkey ass, that's why I said monkey, but not in the way you think I'm thinking about it. You can't contain yourself. You can't control yourself. You get frustrated. Then you want to hate on that person too. All because you're the fraud. You already admitted. That's why I didn't like my I, I ain't going to say that. <laughs> you already admitted that you're an Uncle Tom house nigga. Everything else is black power facade. This is all bullshit. You already said that black people caused you problems and it's white people that freed your monkey ass. That's what you said. Now you got this ghetto hoe. I mean, that's what hoes are for. They need a pimp. So that's fine. You got this ghetto hoe kissing your ass. I know you got to be paying the bitch so she can get some extra weed and, and crack cocaine money. She ain't going to turn that shit down. So I come on this fucking live. He called. Well, I mean, I guess you could say I'm hating. I mean, <laughs> or enlightening the, 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 the crowd. You want whatever you want to call it. Some people call it hating. I call it enlightening the crowd, especially her ignorant ass. And I mean, ignorant in the actual meaning of the word, because that's what she is. She's a loud mouth. Sam Kinison type of would be comedian. Loud. Not funny at the least. I mean, damn. Can you say one funny joke? You think you're a comedian? The only thing that's funny about her is her filthy, disgusting, unattractive voice. That's annoying. Shit. So, <laughs> I go on this fucking live, right? Something told me, don't even bother. But then I said, you know what, let me just see if I can get a word through clarification of, of, of some kind and give this hood rat one more opportunity to be what she thinks she is, which is an intellectual. So I get on and as usual, 
these people are, they can't get the ghetto hood rat out of them. And you combine that with the liquor and the alcohol and the drugs. They're very impatient. As soon as they hear a buzzword that excites their senses, the first thing that they want to do is cut you off and interrupt. And it doesn't matter how much respect you give these fuckers. They're not used to respect, but, but they always demand it. When you give them fucking respect, they don't want to give it back. They're just playing the role, waiting to be a ghetto hood rat once again. That's why I say even if we get reparations, these ghetto hood rats would just be the same old ghetto hood rats only with money. The hood mobile, you know, the, the Oldsmobile with the big ass rims and shit like that. It'll just be upgraded to some expensive vehicle. The clothes, the clown outfits will remain the same. They'll go and get the best weed possible and they'll go get kilos of cocaine so they can have on deck when they need them. But their lifestyles will remain the same. Their low intelligence will remain the same. Their tempers will remain the same. Their facade about who they are will remain the same. So in that sense, reparations won't do anything. And these people are too dumb to send their kids to a better place in life because they're dumb. Dumb people can't produce intelligent kids. It's up to the kids to break out of that cycle. And usually that works when they're introduced to some other people. I know she'll probably say, oh, you're talking about my kids. I don't know your kids, but I know ghetto hood rats. And I know what you're all about. Name dropping some Uncle Toms and some Uncle Tom organizations. See, if you're really about whoever the hell you claim you, you are, number one, you wouldn't be spending all your goddamn time on YouTube. That's number one. Two, you wouldn't have to name drop. You don't hear me name dropping. People who name drop got to have some type of respect from an association from other people. Based off of their, their name or whatever the hell they did. Fuck a name drop. What the fuck did you do? See, I don't know what you did. I don't know what you claim you do. Even though you got to be lying because there ain't no way in hell some ghetto hood rat like you could be negotiating shit because you you don't have the fucking patience to negotiate it and you're not a fucking professional and I don't need to know you to know it because I could tell by the way you talk and the way you carry yourself and the fact that you smoke weed all day you're full of shit These people do YouTube lives all fucking day. And they want you to believe that they, they got some kind of type of job or something. The fuck? These people think they're going to be ghetto YouTube stars. I already know this shit ain't going to lead to nothing for me. I was trying to do something constructive. But you got too many coons out here who just want to stay as they were. If it wasn't for that white boy today, I'd probably get grab me a white woman and call it a life. But that motherfucker pissed me off. So I'm, they remind me about how white people are. So I said, man, fuck that. <laughs> I'm like, damn. 
But it goes to show that's why we need unity because, you know, these people fuck around. But we can't do it because these black ghetto fucking hood rats. They're, they're so fucking stupid. They can't control themselves. They try to compensate by trying to be tough. And I know this because I grew up in the hood. So I know how it is. And I know how I used to act before I actually started respecting education. I was never stupid, but I dropped out of high school because I just wasn't interested in the subject matter and because my mother wasn't hooking me up with the gear that I needed. <laughs> you know, you're in high school, you need, need some fly gear and haircuts. She wasn't doing that. She was looking out for the other siblings. Instead, and they didn't do shit. She she pushed them to go to college and, and even paid out of her fucking pocket for her favorite to go to college. And she didn't do shit. She couldn't make it. Then I go. She kept saying, you need to change your life. Go to school, get a GED, something. I went and got the GED. Then I decided to go to college. And I asked her for some help. She said, no, you get financial aid in your name. I said, I don't know if I could do that. She didn't ask. She didn't get no, she didn't tell the uh, other, my sister to get no financial aid. She paid for that shit out of her pocket. Got her whatever she wanted or whatever she felt she needed. And said, oh, well, she can use it. You, you don't really need it. You're okay. That's the type of bullshit I had to go through. Then when I look back, I realize all the ass whoopings I got were pretty excessive. And I ain't talking about uh, slap them on the ass. <laughs> Sometimes I got slapped in the face, beat with extension cords, doubled up extension cords, I might add. It's like getting whipped like a slave. Beating with every goddamn thing over any any fucking excuse. And then as I got older, fucking cops called on me all the fucking time. <laughs> it's fucking annoying. That's how I learned how to deal with cops after a while. Because I realized by the time they come and you're still kind of like I was today with this white guy. <laughs> and your feelings, so to speak. Uh, like I said, man, that white guy doesn't understand, man. I haven't had a fight in a while, but my man was close to getting his neck broken. <laughs> I swear to you. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why you want to go fucking with people you don't know, man. I, I just don't understand. But I, I, I still try to remain calm because you never know what that person just got through doing or what he's into. He could be somebody from some other part of the country who committed homicides and he's on the run trying to lay low and he might say, okay, now you fucking with me. You, you just gotta be cautious. You know, I saw one hand on the steering wheel. I didn't see the other hand. So <laughs> you just gotta be cautious because you don't want to be too mad to the point that you're not thinking and you get the wrong decision on that. But yeah, that's how I learned how to deal with the police. Because they used to come to our house all the fucking time. Over every little fucking thing. And I was almost always the fucking victim. But I was getting older and bigger. And they didn't know how to control me. No father in the house. So they figured, you know, like black women and women in general do. Call the police. And hope that the police will beat them down. Or at least inconvenience you. Uh, by taking you to jail. And in the beginning. That happened. Now, of course I was pissed off. Because I'm like. Why do these people want this to happen? I said I'm not out here shooting people. And robbing people. And doing drugs and shit. But these people keep fucking. Fucking with me. And then I noticed. I said damn every time the cops came. And I was screaming and yelling. And I had sweat on me. That's when the handcuffs came on. 
So I started wising up after a while. <laughs> when they started calling the cops and exaggerating on things, oh, he did this, he's scaring me, you know, all the you know, all the bullshit that they do. Then I said, you know what? Let me relax, let me calm myself down, let me fix my clothes up, make it neat. Let me go get a towel, wipe the sweat off of me, and get something to drink, not liquor, to remain calm. And I said, when the cops come, no matter what, remain calm, no matter what, no matter what the fake tears that come down, because the cops got to make their judgment call. And you know how females do, coming with the fake tears, he's scaring me, blah, 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 and all that kind of shit. I'm afraid for my life. So I real that's when I started realizing shit is biased. If you're a man and the cops come, they just assume that you're the guilty party, even if you're the fucking victim. <laughs> even if you get attacked. So I said, let me remain calm. So when they came, they said, what's going on here? She would tell her uh, side of the story. Sometimes my mother would back her up. Even if my mother knew nothing was going on. Just because that was her favorite. And I, I guess I was the mistake child. So. You know, I learned to remain calm and just say. You know, I don't know. She's upset. And I guess uh, since she can't get her way. She decided to call the police and hope that you come and beat me down. That's the way it seems to me because I didn't put a hand on her. And then after a while, the cops, they look, you know how it is. They're looking at each other. Everybody's seeing what's what. They're seeing that she, she's looking more pissed off. I'm looking like I haven't been doing anything. I'm calm. That's the key thing with cops. That's why I tell you, you got to be calm. You don't have to call them sir. You don't have to kiss their asses. Just be calm. Even if you did do something, <laughs> be calm. Because that will save your trip. So then the cops will leave. And then they get pissed off when the cops leave and they didn't take me away. And then I would try to call the cops. I called the cops one time. Because I got attacked by my sister. With a tool. That could have killed somebody too, by the way. I had the mark on me. Cops came. They saw the mark on me. They start they start putting handcuffs on my sister. Then my mother intervened. She got in front. She got in between the cop and my sister. And she said, You ain't taking her. You take him. I said. I said, motherfucker. That's what I said to myself. I didn't say it out loud, but I said, damn. I said, it's like that. I'm like, I'm the one who got attacked. She said, you take him. And to my fucking surprise, the cops took me. And I'm like, I called the cops. I'm the victim. I didn't do a goddamn thing. And that was a bad time because I ended up getting the chicken pox and shit. From some guy in the, I guess in the paddy wagon in the, in the jail. And I was pissed off. I was a fucking teenager. I was pissed off to the point that somebody in the jail would have said the wrong thing. I was going to have a reason to be there. But even through that situation, I said, you know what? They're lying. See, a lot of black people forget. They keep thinking, okay, once you get arrested... You're going to jail. I, you know, going, you're doing time. You ain't doing time. You, you know, you're just getting processed. And then you got to go to court, which none of this shit ever went to court. But they did what they did because they were hoping that I would get beaten down, at least. You know, that's why my other sister, her boyfriend, used to come over. She used to get them to try to beat me up. One, I had a little fight with one of them, 
But I kind of let him do it because I want to call the police so he can go to jail. That's what I was trying to be slick like that. Now, that backfired on me. If I would have known that, I would have whipped his ass. Yeah, even at the age of 15. You know, he may have been a little bit stronger, but I was a little bit taller. I, I had skills. But um, they damn sure wouldn't fuck with me now. That's, that's for damn sure. Because <laughs> they're fucking little pipsqueaks next to me now. And I'm stronger than them now. So. And I still got skills. But, yeah, that cop shit. I guess those are valuable lessons I learned because I carried that shit with me as I got older. And um, you realize no matter what situation you get into, remain calm. Once you're excited, see, cops are like uh, people who come on the scene, Johnny come lately. That's what they are. If they see somebody like, motherfucker, I'll, I'll kill you and all that. Okay, well, that mu that motherfucker must be the one who's guilty. Cuff him. Take him away. And the one who's quiet must be the victim. But it could be the other way around. And me, with my height, that's why I got to remain calm. <laughs> because they always look at you as a threat. So, that, that I mean, when you're smaller, you're not a threat. When you're taller, you, you know, if you're excited... Like like uh, when LeBron James hit that guy in, in, with his fist. You saw how big that guy was, even though he was only 20 years old. He was big as fuck. He was going off. So he, he, seen, he seemed dangerous to people. You know? And LeBron James was calm. Even though he's the one who punched the guy in the, in the fucking face. <laughs> I don't know why LeBron James is acting up all of a sudden, but... I don't know what it is, but he's doing it. But anyway, back to these fucking ghetto hood rats. And this uh, crazed maniac who has his uh, new hoe under control. I go on this hood rat show. I knew I shouldn't have. So I calmly let the hoe say what she had to say and she was interrupting me as I was saying what I had to say which is typical with these hood bright shows which is why I'm kind of falling back uh, from these kind of people because I can't stand them actually but they can make more content because they got more time because they ain't doing nothing all day they're unemployed and they're drug addicts <laughs> that's just the fucking bottom line they didn't finish high school. I ain't trying to put people down, but I'm just saying they didn't. That's and, what, and that's why I tell you that I dropped out of high school because some people say, oh, this guy trying to brag because he got a college degree. You goddamn right I'm a brag. Why, why, why not? God damn it. I went to go get it. And if I dropped out and went to go get it, you can go get it. So that that's so you damn right. I'm uh I ain't bragging about it, but I'm gonna let it be known. And the reason why I let it be known like that is because I know how the mind thinks, especially the black mind thinks, when you don't have the college degree, but you think you know everything, versus when you do attend college and you're learning what you thought you knew, but you realize you didn't know what you thought you knew. And then when you're out of college and done with it, that's why I bring the degree up. Because, and that's how I can tell who has one and who does not have one. <laughs> and they, no matter how slick or how intelligent they try to sound, I know that you don't have one because I know what college forces you to do. And people who have been, they know what I'm talking about. Because you can't go to college and pull that ghetto bullshit in college. You just can't do that. And you know what I'm talking about. Try to not answer, try to over talk people, try to uh, 
act like, uh, you know, book come with some bullshit explanations to try to explain shit away, all that kind of shit. You can't pull that in college. That's why when you hear me talk to people, and just to say when, uh, when I uh, have my little mini discussions, I say, can you define what black is or what is an African? They call it trolling when I ask a question like that. When you're in college, you got to define that shit. You can't just start talking out of your ass. Trying to think you're going to blow over on a point And then not define what the fuck you're talking about. So that's what ghetto hood rap people do because they think they can get over with that bullshit. Combined with their emotions. You, you don't have to ask me nothing. Just answer the goddamn question. That's how they do. That's that hood rat argument. That's why they can't deal with me in debates. That's why they want to leave me alone when they can. But I'm leaving them alone because I'm tired of them. They they keep, for years and years, all they're doing is talking about nothing. Truth be told. I was trying to fucking build. That's why I realized ghetto hood rats are not the ones to build with. Because they're dumb. That's number one. They're too fucking emotional. Number two, they do drugs all day. You can't do anything with these kind of people. I'm just being honest. So I go on this whole show. I'm talking about how she's being manipulated. And I did say that she was weak minded. And she almost didn't catch that. That's how weak minded and dumb she was. She almost didn't catch the insult. Yeah, I was throwing that insult up because the shit is true. So she took objection to that after she thought about it for a while. <laughs> and then um but hey, you know how it is. If it's true, it's true. I got to say it. So then the crazed maniac her pimp, her manipulator comes on I let the Negro speak you know how I do totally uninterrupted for about 40 minutes I had to endure his repetitive stories that he repeats over and over and over that's how you know he's a crazed maniac that's why this Ghetto hood rat doesn't understand the signs. People who keep repeating the same thing. Matter of fact, you hear these hood rat intellectuals keep saying, they say the definition of insanity is trying to do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. They just heard somebody white say that, so they sound smart to them. Well, let's go by that. If that's the an accepted general definition, then how come you don't get that this guy keeps doing the same shit over and over and over and over and over and over again? And you don't pick up on the fact that this is a nut. Huh? I could say even Sarnetta is not crazy. <laughs> he may not be the... The, the, the brightest man in the world, but he doesn't come off as a crazed maniac. That I can say for sure. But this lady is totally smitten by this guy, defending him, putting her cape on. And she don't even know the guy. I'm trying to explain to this filthy individual that. This guy will sniff out his prey, and it's almost always a woman. Other women left his ass because they realized he was just a uh, fucking Uncle Tom fraud. You know, it takes some people some time, but once they keep hearing your words, they realize this guy's full of shit. And he's full of shit because he's crazy. That's why he's full of shit, in, in case you don't get it. <laughs> he can't help but to be full of shit because he's a fucking lunatic. 
But she's the latest weak minded to get manipulated. And I'm sure through money. So if you notice people who would give me donations, I, I don't fall for manipulation. I don't let you control me. Say, oh, well, I gave you money. Uh, you know, you should be doing this and that. That's not how it works. This guy comes on. I thought we were actually going to have a conversation, but I should have known that this guy is still scared straight to answer actual questions pertaining to pertinent information that would contradict the lies that he's keeps on kicking. So I let the Negro speak uninterrupted for about 40 minutes. His hoe muted her mic. I'm thinking, okay, she's just going to let this flow. So then I finally get my turn. Then once I mentioned the fact that this Negro paid me $50 for an appearance and kept bugging the hell out of me for that $50 back for years, she unmutes her mic and she starts interrupting. I said, damn, does this man have this lady totally brainwashed or what? Because I told you, when you drink and smoke and do drugs, it's easy to brainwash you. Look it up. Every time people are getting brainwashed, they must always have drugs. If they don't have drugs, then they keep repeating the same things over and over again. Just like when you watch TV about that C-19 over and over again. Some people say, well, uh, hey, they keep talking about it. It must be real. If they don't talk about it. It can't be real. That's how people think. That's how brainwashing works. And I told you before in my brainwashing series, and I should put the rest up. It's the same effect when you go into a club. People don't drink when they first go there. When it's kind of empty. Music is on, nobody's dancing because they don't have something to help bring them to that level of a trance. Once they start drinking and then the drinks start uh, affecting them, then they lose it and they start getting into that trance and they start dancing and doing whatever the fuck they normally wouldn't do if they weren't drinking. Why do you think they sell drinks at bars? I mean, at clubs. Do you think clubs could be in bars and sh well, clubs and uh, shit like that? You think they could be half as successful if they didn't sell alcohol? Because the alcohol helps to uh, put your mind in that state where you can follow the crowd, so to speak. But anyway, this, this guy, he knows how to sniff out his prey. Once he sniffs out the fact that he has a weak-minded individual, he'll pounce on that prey. And he'll keep working that prey until it is the way it is now, where he can control, pimp, and manipulate the prey to the point where the prey is like a person whose mind is no longer her mind if she ever had a mind. Now he is controlling her. And again, I always say, listen, if the man got some pimp skills <clears throat> and the hoe is too dim with it to recognize that she's under the spell, then I'm not going to try too hard to make sure that she comes out of the trance. I'm just going to let her do what it is <clears throat> that her handler feels that he's going to do. And let her figure it out later on, if she ever does. But he had other females who he doesn't have sex with, apparently, uh, 
Because if he was about uh, sex, uh, we know that by now. But he uses females. And he tries to use males, too, with money. He gave this guy named Craig some DJ equipment or something. That guy, I don't... If people notice, I don't really deal with him because he's... He's, he's the type of person that lacks integrity. I know he might take that as a diss, but I, I just can't deal with people who try to be funny. Especially when you're grown. These people are 50, 60 years old. You gotta keep that in mind. Um, he tried to control him with money. He control other females with money. He gave me $50. I never asked. Oh, I was about to say, what the fuck is going on? Sorry, I saw some lights come out. I thought those were mushes. I'm like, the fuck? But um, I never asked. It might be that guy. <clears throat> I never asked for the goddamn money. He was trying to push this money on me. And this hoe kept badgering me to pull up the email. As if I had to, I had to be in a rush all of a sudden. I didn't even get two minutes to start saying what the fuck I had to say. To retort what this uh, maniac was saying. His lies. Because that's all he does is lie all day. But once he stops paying her, I'm sure she'll figure it out. But um, she kept saying, show the email. Show the email now. Like I was on Jeopardy and I had a time limit. But then once I finally did bring the email up, then she said, yeah, you, know, you ain't got nothing. You out of here. All that kind of shit. Because what I was saying was true. He talked about a fucking raffle. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell this guy something else. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put it in the community tab too. Not only do I have the emails to show prove my case, but the one thing I do like about Gmail is that even though they take your previous channel down, what I noticed is that the comments can still be accessed in your Gmail. Oh, yes. <laughs> because the comments on the YouTube came before the email. See, he called it a raffle, but he wanted me to go to his kiss my ass day. He paid me. He paid others to go. This is what I was going to try to explain on there. But they didn't want to hear it because she's defending him because I guess she's being paid. But if you notice, I only went to that one so-called liberation day. And that was it. Never again, because he paid his last one. He only had one person on because everybody else realized that he's full of shit. He paid the 50, first he offered the $50, tried to force it on me. First, I was like, nah, I'm good. <clears throat> and then, um, he tried to say PayPal. He wanted PayPal because he he figured, well, because, you know, he keeps asking to see my fucking face all the fucking time like he's a fucking homosexual. Worry about my goddamn face. Don't worry about nothing. So you can harass me like you're harassing everybody else. Got to be crazy. Well, you are crazy. <laughs> so <laughs> he figured. If I get a PayPal, he's like, oh, I got PayPal. Figure he'd be able to get my information. 
addresses and shit like that. I said, nah, nah. So I've been dealing with PayPal for quite some time. So I said, I already know what, what the fuck you trying to pull. So I said, why don't you go, and it's in the emails. I said, why don't you go and get a fucking Visa gift card or something like that and give me the goddamn number. That's how you could pay me the $50. Then he kept coming up with bullshit excuses after that. He's like, PayPal is easy and all that kind of shit. I said, it ain't easy for me. Then that's when I said, why don't you donate the 50 to the GoFundMe? He didn't want to do that because he wanted to try to get my address and shit like that. See, these people don't understand. I've been dealing with a lot of this cyber shit before they got on the scene. So you can't trick me. That's why people like him get frustrated. Because they these people keep trying to drop hints. Trying to gather clues. Trying to be slick. Trying to separate their clue gathering uh, from weeks and months. And trying to piece it all together. See, I never slip because I know what people are up to. And I know that there's some certified nuts out here. So that's why I can't slip up. But I know what he was trying to do. So I said, you put it in the goal for me. So he eventually did that. And that's it. But this hoe didn't want to uh, listen to that because she's apparently sucking the guy's penis or something. Uh, and then when I showed the proof, she said, I look up proof. I know this man. I seen his medical records. Then I wanted to explain the difference between him saying that people get mistakenly locked up. Matter of fact, before I do that, there's this female with some big ass lips. She looked like a fish. She used to be on his channel. And then she tried to get involved to be an instigator. She claimed to be a fucking lawyer. That's another one. What the fuck kind of lawyer got to be involved in this wackiness for her? On there all day. Every time they go live, she's always on there. You know, no lawyer got time for that shit. Another crazed maniac. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people are mentally ill. Try to act like she's some fucking mediator. And try to get herself in the mix just because she wanted some ghetto excitement. Anyway. This female... Listen, this guy... I try to explain the difference between because his his excuse is I was unjustly incarcerated. So I'm not crazy. She says, I looked up his records. This is the same lady who lied on Maurice Muhammad because she was trying to come in and act like a superhero. Loud mouth. So she even lied on Maurice Muhammad. Try to say he was some type of pervert out in public. Pulled the uh the 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 shit she the information she supplied up. The guy looked similar to him, but it's clear it clearly was not him. So she fucking lied. So that hoe can't be trusted. Now I see why Maurice Muhammad was pissed off at her. Because she can't be trusted. She's one of those sensationalists. Thinking she's going to be a YouTube megastar. Well, I got news for you. The only way you can be a YouTube megastar is to have mass appeal with the white people. And you don't appeal to them. Unless you keep cooning. Maybe you might, uh, well, keep, I'll tell you this, never show your face, though, I'll tell you that. Because that then you definitely ain't getting no mass appeal. Shit. <clears throat> and like I said to you and the black authority, when it comes to the motherfucking jokes, you leave that shit to me. <laughs> you people don't try it. She's one of those people who got to bully people into laughing at her whack-ass jokes. I mean, God damn. 
She reminded me of one of those fucking. You remember uh, when Comedy Central used to show uh, the stand up comedian? I don't know if they still do. You turn the channels, you say, oh, stand up comedy, okay. Then you like listening for 10 minutes as they do their routine. And you're like, okay, when is the joke coming? <laughs> you know, you like, shit, man. Who, I mean, I thought this was the Comedy Central channel. Shit. I mean, yeah, I'm supposed to be laughing and shit. I'm not laughing. It's like Saturday Night Live or some shit like that. But when BET had that comic view, that was some funny shit now. That's the difference. She, she, she belongs on Comedy Central. Take my wife, please type of shit. You know, all those whack-ass jokes. Hey, guess what I had for dinner last night? <laughs> oh, man, it's a trip, man. My wife made meatloaf. <laughs> I mean, come on. You know, I tell you this, man. Every time, if somebody got laugh at their own jokes, that should be a clue that you're not funny. <laughs> you got to be loud. You know, those loud-ass comedians... Wanda Sykes, Sam Kinison, and whoever the fuck else. They're loud because they're not funny. <laughs> so they try to supplement the lack of being funny. I give even the wackest comedians, they are, most of the comedians are wack as fuck. I give them props for at least being brave enough to go take their asses on stage. Knowing that they're corny. But I guess, you know, you see a lot of corny ass comedians that can get paid getting their own TV show like Ellen and, and uh, <laughs> shit like that. Even though I'm sure they she got her show for other reasons, but um, get some TV shows, get some movie appearances and shit like that. But they're not really funny. See that Craig Anderson with the Pizza Hut shit. I'm like, he's doing all the fucking commercials. <laughs> you know, you got some black comedians that try to be, they try to rock the white crowd because they can't rock the black crowd. Then when the white crowd gets tired of them, they try to get into the black crowd. But white, black people said, nah, man, Wayne Brady, nah, <laughs> you ain't with it, man. Huh? But um, that's what she is. She needs to stop with the jokes and she, if she claims she got some knowledge, which she doesn't, uh, kick her knowledge and then she was talking about the nation of islam up here lying and then trying to tell me i don't know what i'm talking about i consider myself to be a nation of islam expert she's just a loud mouth who's uh messing with somebody and she didn't even learn enough from him to recite what he's been telling try to say that farrakhan Went right and took over the nation of Islam. And then when I corrected her dumb ass, then she tried to switch it up and say, oh, Wallace uh, took over uh, the nation of Islam. But he didn't turn. He, he destroyed the nation of Islam and nobody followed him. See, that's how much of an idiot she is. Nation of Islam people know that Wallace turned them into Orthodox Islam. That's what the fuck happened. To, the, to Elijah Muhammad's Nation of Islam. And I used to see Wallace and his organization all the time on a public access channel. So I was, uh, every, I think it was every week, he used to come on. Same thing with Farrakhan. So I was up on what these people were doing. She doesn't know anything, so so she she supplements facts for being rude and having a loud ass mouth. And she doesn't want to be wrong because she's one of those people who thinks that she has to be right all the fucking time. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Oh, I lose credibility. You lose credibility from the beginning because you're a loud mouth hood rat. I mean, damn. And then you don't want to have a fucking discussion. I thought I could have a discussion. I keep forgetting you can't have civilized discussions with ghetto hood rats. And again, I can call people ghetto hood rats because I come from the fucking ghetto. But as you can see in here, rather, <laughs> I don't sound ghetto. 
But when they push me there, then it can come back out. How come I don't sound ghetto? Because I never liked the way a lot of black people spoke. I'm like, how come motherfuckers can't pronounce words the right way and get their tenses right? I can never understand that shit. How come you can't speak like you, like the shit reads? How come when black people read shit, how come they make up their own words that's not fucking on the screen or on the paper? <laughs> I don't understand that shit. They throw in words that's not there. They omit words that are there. I know sometimes it happens when they can't pronounce the word. Or they pronounce words in, in ways that they don't even... They make their own shit up. So, I'm trying to explain to this individual. There's a difference between being wrongly accused and being sent to prison. That happens. But that's when you're wrongly accused of a crime. And it's usually from eyewitness testimony. Not actual evidence. But in the case of a grown man stalking another man. And being sent away for 10 years in a mental facility. That's not a case of mistaken justice that's a case of they're evaluating the guy by the fucking week by the day and they're determining that this man is a certified nut for 10 fucking years in prison you're not getting evaluated for anything except if you are fucking up in prison, you do your time. Unless you're just getting off, uh, getting lower rate for good behavior or something like that. Or some other type of shit. But in the mental ward, you keep proving to the doctors that you're sick and you belong there. That's why they keep you there. And this lady is getting manipulated by a certified nut. Which means she's either a nut, a dimwit, a drug addict, or all of the above. <laughs> sure, I wouldn't doubt if it's all of the above. But whatever the case is, he's smarter than she is, and he's a certified nut. <laughs> Shit, that's the one thing I can say to him. He, hey, but see, crazy people always try to manipulate people all the time. That's why he doesn't like people like me because I can't be manipulated. I know his game. He tried to manipulate me with that money. Thinking he's going to give me some money. I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, jump to whatever he says. $50 ain't shit. And then he tries to harass you. Give me my $50 back. You paid me for a job, motherfucker. So I keep it. And harassing me. I'm going to let you can, you can keep on harassing me about $50 because you ain't getting it back. At one point in time, I was close to saying, fuck it, I give it to him. Just so he shut the fuck up. But then after that, I said, man, fuck that. I was a fucking payment for a job. I said, man, fuck that. You ain't getting shit because he did that with everybody he uh, met on YouTube. Gave him some money to control. Or to try, attempt to manipulate. I think that's why he started off with $50 with me. And a whole lot more with other people. Because he figured. I can control these people. Test the water with me. And if I uh, did whatever he wanted me to do. He'd probably send some more. And then. He said okay I got a live one. But he realizes he doesn't have a live one. With me. Only the weak minded. Can he control. Like the guy he gave uh, some DJ uh, so-called radio station equipment to. That's one of the dim-witted type uh, individual. I, you know, I know they might say, hey, man, I thought we were pieced out. Well, we, we were more neutral. I mean, I don't have anything personally against the guy. But I don't like his style. I don't like his style. And he's another phony uh, pro-black guy. Totally phony. I, I I can't stand that shit. Be real with the shit. 
I don't do it. I mean, if you want to be a fucking entertainer on YouTube, do that. You might get a larger audience. But then when it comes to other people he gave money to and keeps talking about they paid off their car and all that, well, she said she didn't ask your monkey ass for all that shit. He keeps saying, give my shit back. If you gave, give. I gave a girl a fucking Christmas present one time. When she promised to get me something in particular. And she never came through. Because she thought if she bought it for me, it was going to be like, oh, I'm using her. But you know what? I still got her with what I got her, which was the surround sound system. Because she liked watching movies. So I said, God damn it, you need to watch it the right way. And did I take it back? Nope. Did I ask for it back? Nope. I did ask her for where my shit was that she promised me. And she kept saying, I got you. Well, she never got me. And after a while, I said, you know what? I'm going to just cut this this lady off. And it's not because I didn't get what she promised. It's because she lied to me and said that she was going to get it. And she never got it. So I had to cut her off. And I think I told part of this story before that one time I went to go to my car and I noticed my neighbor who had a similar car and color had his front window busted out. This is after I verbally told her some some not so nice things because she was bullshit. See, I don't like people who bullshit. But I, I was saying that because she kept on calling me so many times like, talk to me and all that kind of shit. So I said, man, I had to, sometimes you just got to say some bad stuff to people so they'll get the hint, get the fuck away. But I don't like liars. So that's why I had to cut her off. <clears throat> so the next morning, I go to the car, my neighbor's windows uh, busted. I immediately put two and two together and I know that she did that shit. But the joke was on her because it wasn't my car. But unfortunately, my neighbor had to get their car window busted. She should have known my car because the car, his car was the last design. Same color. Last design. And I also kept something in the windshield. Well, the rear view mirror thing. And she should have known that from having been in the car <laughs> so many times. But see, that's where the anger comes into play. She was so pissed. She said, I'm going to show this guy. Well, you showed somebody, but you didn't show me. <laughs> so, <laughs> and of course, I hate to say it. I ain't say nothing to the neighbor. Like, oh, man, I think I know who did that. Because obviously, main reason is, you know, even if you call the police, they're going to be like, do you have any proof that she did this? Of course, no. You only have circumstances. So I didn't even bother. But that's how people try to do. They try to control you. So again, staying in a mental facility for 10 long years. We have a whole bunch of people evaluating. I, I caught part of his report that he put up by mistake. And he said, quote, unquote, to the evaluator, I'll rip that faggot beard off of your face. Did that hoe catch that in the fucking uh, report? And I heard the hoe read on the air. She can't read. 
she has no reading comprehension, but you know, when when you deal with ghetto hood rats. I was about to say, when you deal with <laughs> ghetto hood rats, they think they know everything. Can't tell them nothing. Matter of fact, early in her show, she was like, she tried to call another lady stupid for uh, using the word immigration with an E. She said, this lady's stupid. You don't spell immigration with an E. (laughs) I said, you see what I mean? You got idiots who call other people stupid because they're so fucking stupid they don't realize there are two words that sound the same. Immigration, they, they both mean the opposite. fucking idiot but this is what happens when you're emotional and you're a ghetto hood rat but she wanted to stick up for her man and then this guy of course he didn't want me to go into anything talking about Mississippi's and all that kind of stuff yeah now you know who I'm talking about (laughs) but I still ain't saying names (laughs) They didn't uh, want me to go into that, so you kept on saying, ah, oh, you ain't doing this, you ain't saying nothing. I ain't let you talk nothing. I ain't, I ain't got to let you say this and nothing, none of that kind of stuff. See, he knew he could control his hoe because she didn't let me get my time. That's why I'm taking my time to say it right now. Again, there was a guy he had on his channel, and I'm going to say his name named Lorenzo that guy reminded me of myself because he asked that guy a lot of the questions because he is clear that Lorenzo upon talking to this cons this, this cocksucker realized that this guy is full of shit so he, he started asking him specific questions that's what kind people they don't like specific questions because then that requires specific answers and if you don't know how to answer, you start tripping over your answers like this guy did. Started getting flustered, upset. So this guy Lorenzo started asking him a lot of the questions I was asking him about a lot of things. Well, if you're going to do this, why are you going to do that? If you do that, people are going to react like that. How are you just going to go there and take over a state? And people are going to let you. And he's still talking about that fucking campaign. He hasn't moved not once. He already invalidated that campaign as it was because he said, I'm not moving there and I'm not doing it until somebody else starts it. So the shit is invalid. So I want his hoe. See, he didn't, he, he didn't, he made sure to interrupt because he knew I was going to go there. I want his hoe to ask him that. So he needs to shut up about that goddamn campaign because nothing's happening. That's some bullshit. He's he's still fronting like he's some black power leader with her trying to act like he's a tough guy. But she is not up on his other shit, his Uncle Tom rhetoric. That's why everybody one by one said, fuck this guy. Because they realize he's not only a fucking nonstop liar, he's a fucking house nigga. Can't tell you how many times this guy praised the white man. But then comes back to us talking about what we need to do. Black this, black that. He got fucking nieces that's half white. That's why he's sensitive to the white man. Loud mouth hoe. Did you ask him about that? Of course not. This hoe fails to realize that she is dealing with a nut. His mind is not right. So everything he's telling you is to manipulate you. He already took over your goddamn channel. But, you know, it is what it is with people like her. If that's how she wants to do it, that's how she can do it. But I had to speak my piece on it because, as is typical, when you go around hood rats, 
they don't want you to speak. Because they know when you're calm, you're going to get it out and you're going to communicate it well to the people. And this is the same reason why my mother and my sister hated and got frustrated and pissed off when the cops came and I was super calm. Because now their evil tricks couldn't work to have the cops uh, throw me to the ground and handcuff me and put me in a car. That's why they get pissed off. Because these hood rats, they got their game plan uh, set. And then when the shit can't come off, they get pissed off. Like I said earlier, this is why a lot of women, they call the cops on guys. Women that should call the cops on guys, they don't. But they call the cops on people because they want you. They're hoping that the cops are going to beat your ass. That's why. They want you to get beaten down. Shit, they don't realize. I think they don't give a damn at the time. That in extreme cases, they can kill you. And they probably wouldn't give a damn if they did probably try to get see what money they can get off of you but see that's why you got to learn to counter hood rat plans and people who are trying to manipulate and trying to set you up you got to learn to counter these type of things and again that's why i also point out this little rage i had today with that white dude My first inclination, because I'm like, why is this guy not moving his car? Just because I blew the fucking horn. You blow the horn as an indicator to get the fuck out the way. Put my car in park. Got out the car. First inclination was. Scream and yell first. That's number one. <clears throat> but. As I was getting close, I said, let me calm down and not run up on the guy's window. Because, you know, every time when you're pissed off, and, um, you know, you can overreact, do the wrong thing, and that could be the thing that might put it into you. You know what I mean? Because I said white people, the one thing I learned growing up, too, is that white people... Look, they you think black women and women in general like setting people up with the police white people like doing that shit that's why <clears throat> white people like to get you pissed off they do that with a lot of black males they like to, and white women, black women too they like to get you pissed off and they'll take the hit just so they can call the cops just so you can go to jail I don't know why they like fucking around with us like that and inconveniencing us. But that's what they do. That's what I learned. They'll take the fucking hit. And they'll set you up. So that you can react in a certain way. Just so they can call the cops. And it's not like they're going to sue you. And get some money out of it. They just want to make your life hell. Just like. The females who want to call the cops on you. Because they get pissed off. They want to use the cops as their personal bodyguards. And hitmen. And a lot of cops are so fucking stupid that they fall for the sob stories. Because, you know, female, I tell you, I grew up in an all-female household. And the one thing I learned, I saw them manipulate men. Whenever they wanted some money, rent, food, they keep on calling them. Get, get the sucker, get the weakest one to come and bring the food. If that guy is, is not doing it, get the next guy to come do it. They cry. They get what they want. Fake tears. I've seen this growing up. This is not something I'm making up. And that's one of the things you learn when you grow up in an all-female household. <laughs> you can see the manipulation. And you can see also, not only that, you can see that a lot of these sucker guys out here are willing to be manipulated. And you know why. Because they want what they want. I seen my oldest sister. She was manipulating guys. Getting him, getting them to do shit. 
borrow, borrow his car and all that kind of shit and get money. And the guy didn't even get nothing out of it. Just like this guy I'm talking about. He said he traveled a thousand miles. He had to sleep in another room like a little child. The kind of man is going to drive a thousand miles. And he said he made the trip five times. And not get, not even get the suck on a titty. I'll be God damn. If I drive 500 miles and I ain't get nothing, I'll be damned. That's why I got to make it clear. I'm sleeping in with you, right? And she says, oh, well, I got a room for you. Well, I got something to do. I ain't, I ain't coming. I'll be damned. I ain't because that's gas, that's tolls, that's time. Wear and tear in the car. Fuck all that. But this sucking nigga. Yeah, that's what I just said. <laughs> they say he can't get it up, but yet he drove all this way, probably to try to manip manipulate in person. Didn't like the experience he had with the lady. He calls her all kinds of names all day. Doesn't like her style. But with that, he still coughed up thousands of dollars. And gave her a credit card. Trying to manipulate. You give her a credit card, she uses the shit, then you upset. The fuck you give it to her for? Emergencies. Oh, well, she had to eat. That's an emergency. <laughs> what the fuck? She needed a cell phone. That's an emergency. <clears throat> don't give it if you don't want them to use it. You're the sucker. And you're a bigger sucker for driving that damn distance and not getting the suck on the titty. Cause I drive that distance. I'm getting me something. <laughs> but then again, guys like me, you know, he's different. He's different from me. Guys like me, I don't really have to work too hard to get it. You know what I mean? <laughs> guys like him, they got to spread out thousands of dollars and still don't get nothing. That's another reason why he's mad at people like me. and want to keep seeing my face. I want to see what this guy look like. He keep talking this and that. Well, I mean, if you're gay... You don't need to worry about it. I mean, mate, that's why you want to see my face, but don't worry about it. Otherwise, shit, you should have seen you some pussy. That's what you should have seen. <laughs> Sucking nigga gonna dole out $6,000 or something like that. And not even get to uh, have a titty in his face. I mean, my God. You talk about a sucker. That's, that's a sucker right there. Like I said, man, ain't... Only I turn the females down. And I ain't gonna lie, in my life I had, you know, like every man, no matter what you look like, sometimes a female will turn you down. But you gotta be able to get the hints of what's going on. You can get the hints of if females are using you or not. I grew up in an all female household even when I first started dating. I was getting played by females because I didn't realize, oh man. Females out here using people for meals, you trying to get you to buy them shit that they don't want to spend money on and all that kind of shit. And then after a while, you realize, oh, they're getting one sucker to get this, another sucker to get that. And all this, I didn't even realize, put two and two together about my uh, experience growing up in the all-female household. Then after a while, I started putting two and two together. I said, oh, shit, I ain't going to be that guy. Because I still remember <laughs> this guy... Unfortunately, the man is dead. He was a nice guy, though. Probably one of the nicest guys she ever bought home. But she played him like a sucker. I remember one time I saw the man, I overheard that man begging my sister for some pussy. He was begging. Now, I'm sure we've all had females that, you know, they seem like they want to do something, but then they either want you to work for it or what have you. We've all probably had to plead our cases at, at, at some point in time. You know, even me, I had to plead my case at point some point in time. But after a while, if they don't do nothing, then it is what it is. But if I had to beg for it, me, I'd just be satisfied sucking on the titties. And say, fuck it, at least I got something out of it. 
you know? Some guys, they want their dick sucked. I don't really, I don't really care about all that. But I know that's shocking, but I don't really care about all that. I'm more satisfied sucking on some titties and let that be that. But, um, <laughs> um, yeah, this guy was begging my sister for some. Older sister, too, by the way, just in case you're curious. Um, <clears throat> and I felt bad. I said, damn, she didn't even let this man do his thing. I know I shouldn't be thinking like that, but I'm like, because she used to bring home some, you know, some guys that I'm like, man, damn. Why are you bringing these type of guys home? Thug type of guys, you know what I mean? But the nice guy, you want to treat him like the sucker. The thug guys, they, they busy doing their thing. And I said, damn. I said, that's fucked up. So, you got to learn how to get through it. But one thing you never do is you never volunteer any goddamn money. That's That's the one thing I learned. Yeah, and the guy I used to uh, hang with, he taught me that shit too. Don't you spend no money. You get them to spend the money on you. Because you'll be played like a sucker, like this guy. But he offered the money because he has to, that's the only way he can get people to like him, I guess. And then when things don't go his way, I want my money back. You shouldn't have taken my money. You shouldn't have given it. Bottom line. And he thinks that harassing people 24 hours a day on YouTube is supposed to make people say, okay, let me give him the money back. I think it worked with one guy. He started making payments on uh, some money he gave back. He gave him. But I ain't giving up. I mean, I got petty cash from the guy anyway. Again, I didn't ask. But that's an attempt to manipulate is by trying to give up some money. So, with that, I don't think I'm done yet. What else did I want to touch on? Oh yeah, I wanted to touch on the fact that these fucking hood rats, these black people, they don't really want black unity. It's all a game to these people. It's all a YouTube show. Because they don't really have anything else to talk about. Just like the information man said. And I really had to think about it when he said it. And I'm going to try and get back on his channel. But see, he's on the West Coast, so we get different time uh, situations going on. But he was right when he said that all black people on YouTube do, most of them, is fucking beef. But one another. It's like that's all they know how to do. And they say that they're content creators. They're ghetto hood rats. That's what they are. Some people do it better than others. Others, they just steal what others do. And then when others don't have anything, they just scream and yell all day. And of course, YouTube loves those channels they keep them on the air and keep them monetized to encourage them to continue the ghetto madness so but i really wish these people would just stop the black power facade see the original black panther party when they were doing what they were doing Aside from tricks and manipulation by the white man and coons. They respected one another and respected black people. They try to show an example of what you should do. See, a lot of these black power people today, they're just so fucking phony. They pretend that they respect you. But the truth is they're actually waiting to disrespect you. Because that's all they know. That's all they're used to. And if you listen to. A lot of these black power people. Whether they're Pan-Africans or Hoteps. 
the Uncle Tomism will come out eventually. It's watching that My Art Forever. There was a Caribbean guy he had on there. I noticed that guy, he was smooth. And the topic of Phoenicia came up again. I like the way my man delivered it to him. He recognizes he has an Uncle Tom house nigger he's dealing with from France. And he tried to walk him into the truth. But and the French guy was confused every now and then. But he realized, damn, I'm an Uncle Tom, so I got to stick with everybody else is white in North Africa and the Middle East, except for ancient Egypt, of course. And the guy couldn't understand. He's like, man, where is this? I mean, what's up with this guy? It's the same effect I had uh, with the guy, because I'm like, I thought the guy was a whole tap, black this, black that. And then after a while, you're like, this guy is Uncle Tom house nigga. And he's acting like he's pro-black. And the same thing with the rest of them. And I'm like, what's behind this? Well, I think we know what's behind it. Uncle Tomism is what's behind it. These people are total frauds. They don't believe in black unity and they're never going to have black unity because they don't want it. They like it the way it is. You got that nut who's constantly, see, to the person who's unaware of him. He sounds like somebody who was like, man, I really like what this man is saying. This man is, is, is serious. He loves us because he says so. But then when you keep listening to him, you realize he hates us. When you see his round the clock hate videos on black women you realize he hates us that is black people in case people are trying to say oh see come on he hates black women if you truly respected black women like you claim you wouldn't make those videos and you wouldn't keep them going he got his primary troll channels taken down. First, he tried to manipulate Sa Netter. Trying to go on him, try to say, oh, try to befriend him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, he didn't know how Sa Netter operates. Sa Netter knows the game you're trying to play. So that's why he let you play it. <laughs> and then after that, he was back to his, let me hate Sa Netter. If you recall, when I had a, a Sa Netter, uh, video are they real or are they agents he got upset why they gotta be agents kissing Sarnetta's ass cause that's what he was trying to do kiss his ass and get down with Sarnetta and he calls people flip floppers this guy's the flip flopper of all flip floppers he stays flip flopping it's funny he'll call other people flip floppers but yet when it comes down to him I could be in error and I could be mistaken. Or you could be lying. How about that? <laughs> but with everybody else, it's the flip flop. Like people don't have the right to flip flop. But see, since his channels got terminated by Sonetter, where are the non-stop videos about him maybe he fears <clears throat> another termination but see he rather attack the women not the men he liked to try to manipulate the women and part of his scheme is he knows that this fem female that he's dealing with has her little beef with Sonetter but does this female know that this man made ass kissing videos uh, uh, to sign at her? Whenever this guy thinks that he has you in his uh, snares, 
he comes with his fake smile. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I lo- I, you know, I, I I like this man. I, I like what you're doing, man. It's great, man. It's great. But as soon as you disagree with the guy, look, but listen, listen what, what, I mean, what you, what you, what you saying this for? Come on now. All oh, that bullshit. He's a, he's a total fraud. But again, see, I know about crazed maniacs. I know their tactics. I know their limitations. And I'm trying to tell this person that he called a cockroach. And he still has the videos up, by the way. It's funny how he tried to say, well, or she tried to say, well, you got the videos up hating on such and such. And they're still up. Yeah, I kept them up because that was the fucking truth in that video. Especially at the time. You can't deny that he got <clears throat> his former female buddy to make a ton of hate videos on me and other people. And I knew the words were coming from him. That's how he uses people. To use them to do his bidding. Just like he's using this lady right now. But she's too fucking stupid <laughs> to realize it. So she'll be left holding the bag being played. But once he pisses people off, she'll wake up and realize that she got played. But you know how black people are. It's just like when you go see those court shows. They start telling everybody's business. He did this. He did that. That's how black people do. And that's why this guy is desperate to f- see my face. So he can do whatever it is he's trying to do with that. Probably jerk off or some shit like that. <laughs> Nasty ass guy. <clears throat> but, um, you know, I didn't appreciate the, uh, the treatment I got the other night. It was to show you just can't have peaceful, calm conversations with Negroes. Because they hate black people. They can't think. See, I know that a lot of people on here are just like him. Sick. That's what I know. And if you want to know a secret when I first got on the YouTube my first inclination was I gotta get me a webcam and then get on then I was like thinking to myself because I didn't have a webcam didn't have a cell phone and then I was thinking to myself you know what what else would I use the webcam for other than that and I didn't want videos that looked like other people just Got their face in the damn video. And nothing else is going on with the video. So I said, I didn't like the resolution on the webcam. I didn't like the webcams. I didn't want one. I said, I don't get freaky over over the webcam like that. So what else am I going to use it for besides YouTube? And then after a while, since, since I had to contemplate that, I started asking myself, you know what? There are some crazy people out here. Should I show my face? Because I was thinking, okay, show my face, get famous. But then I said, you know what? I'm not looking for fame. I'm looking for results. And then after a while, you start getting involved with black people. And then you realize, you know what? These people aren't looking for results. They're just looking for fame. And you can tell when they keep recounting their entire life history, wanting to show pictures of themselves <clears throat> throughout the ages. You're looking for some kind of recognition. And then they constantly ask why I'm not showing my face. And they think that because they keep bringing it up over and over again, that I'm somehow going to get annoyed and say, you know what, just to shut them up, let me show my face. You know, understand, I got extreme patience. And in fact, when I was a kid, I used to be one of those people that annoyed people thinking that if I keep, what the hell? Well, <laughs> Keeping that if I uh, thinking that if I keep on uh, repeating the same things and begging and crying, that they'd eventually give in. Sometimes it worked, a lot of times it didn't. So I stopped that. 
And you got a grown man, 60 years old, trying to beg strangers to show their faces on YouTube. That sounds at the very least like some agent talk. And sounds like some shit, you know, that he could probably, he wants to use to make his uh, diss videos. Now, if this man was interested in a campaign, how come we don't see videos about that? See what he's really, we see videos about what he's really interested in, which is dissing black women, hating on people, hating on black people. Every other video that he has when he's supposedly serious, that's his live. That's the videos that he makes when he's lying. You can't deny that. Guy has the nerve to put on one of his cheap ass suits and then tries to act like he's serious about something. How are you going to be serious the whole 2021? You probably made 2% of your videos about a campaign or about anything serious, especially when we consider your age. And 98% of your videos has been ghetto madness, this videos, controversy, foolishness, infantile behavior. And this man is nearly 60 years old and all you before I leave. And this is a long one right now. We have one hour and 46 minutes. This is a long one. So people said they wanted it longer. This is long. <laughs> uh, this guy keeps talking about I had my GoFundMe month, GoFundMe, which was supposed to have been a bad thing. He's like, I don't even know what you were supposed to come up with. Number one, my shit got disrupted. GoFundMe. I told this fucker this many times. GoFundMe wanted some personal information I didn't want to give up. And then they ended the campaign. And I think somebody, not him, but they stole $50 from somebody who donated because I don't think they gave it back. And I never got it. So they stole that money. I just didn't want to give out the extra information because I felt like they're setting you up. You started off with them and then all of a sudden, oh, we want this information. That information is social security numbers. That's the information. What you need that for? If it's a GoFundMe, crowdfunding, what you need uh, fucking social security numbers for? So I said, fuck it. So... And this guy, if, as you know, he used to always talk about, oh, this guy taking donations. Yeah, I was taking them, but unlike other people, you don't see me constantly begging, saying you got the cash app in the uh, in the, in the chat room, uh, donate this, donate that. You don't see that with me. I just put it out there. If it's out there and people do it, fine. See, now, other people say that, but I mean it, and, and I show and prove because you don't really hear me promoting that shit. But other people keep putting it in. Put the uh, cash up in the chat. Uh, why, why don't you donate to this? Other people uh, donate all the time. Why don't you give me this? Give me that. I don't need your money. But goddamn, the cash app is here. Hit me. Hit the cash app. I'm rich. Let's compare bank accounts. I do YouTube for fun. I don't really. I don't need the money. But yet, they're making million videos per month, especially before the end of the month, because they know that's when the, the, the fucking check is going to accumulate. <laughs> I used to be monetized, so I know. And then, they say things like, I'm opening a restaurant. I don't give a damn if you know who I'm talking about or not. And I don't give a damn if you tell either. I'm opening up a restaurant. I finally got the uh, restaurant uh, uh, spot. Now, let me see. I want to see if my people will support me and give me donations to uh, set this off. Well, if you already got it, that means you must have spent money already. So what you need donations for? 
And if you're so fucking rich, your bank account is so big, what you need donations for? Oh, I was told by rich people, don't spend your own money to start businesses. Yeah, try to solicit donations from people on YouTube to start your business. But that shit didn't work out because other people are agents and got more charisma. But these people, they do it all the time to you. I don't need your goddamn money. Then they keep bragging about, oh, I got, th I'm rich. I'm uh, uh, just put bank accounts next to each other. And then they keep uh, begging for donations, and they keep making sure they make as many YouTube videos to get as much money as they can. But then they lie to you and say, "I do this for fun." Well, you must want a whole lot of fun. Because you keep on doing it. So. Then after that. You got this guy that I'm talking about. He. Had an incident in the hospital. Guess he told one person one thing. Told me another thing. Of what it was supposed to be. And then. He puts up a hospital fund. He only got like five people watching him. But for some odd reason, he thought he was going to get thousands of dollars. Hospital fund to help out with the bills. Because I'm no longer working and I need help with the bills. He said that on the one hand. And on the other hand. He said, <clears throat> my insurance got all the bills paid. See, that hoe didn't want to hear this, but maybe she knew about it. Oh, yeah, and hoe don't simulcast this either. Because I am, I don't flag anybody's videos, but I will flag this just because of the way you treated me. So don't simulcast none of that shit, because that ain't content, simulcasting other people's videos. That's that ghetto bullshit. If you need to watch somebody else's video to com comment on shit just to make a video, then you might as well not even make any videos. That seems to be the only thing she needs is, oh, let me see somebody's video. Oh, they took it down. Huh? Oh, shit, what am I going to say now? Come on. But that's the thing this guy did. He um said, oh, okay, my insurance. I got good insurance. They paid my bills. Then he would say, oh, my bills are paid out. Then another time, oh, well, I need some help on these bills. How come people ain't giving my money? Then, okay, well, this guy gave me a dollar trying to be funny. He's bad. I hate him. I bet you that dollar is more than you got from anybody else. Or well, maybe one other person may have sent you something. But the bottom line is you were begging for money under false pretenses. Having some people think, oh, man, I'm about to die. The motherfucker wasn't humbled by his experience. Instead, he came out on a rampage. And you see how he is now. I'm sure some people probably wish he would have succumbed to his situation. And well, some people did, for that matter. <laughs> um... So he's a hypocrite with that. He set up a Zelle, PayPal, GoFundMe, all types of shit. All I got is cash app. I don't have various ways for people to pay me. Some people ask me to, for PayPal <clears throat> recently. You need to get PayPal. And I'm not getting PayPal for a few reasons. Number one, I know why people, like I said earlier, why people want a PayPal for you. Two, PayPal has a history of keeping money if you start making too much too soon. That's why people don't fuck with PayPal. Like that. And now eBay doesn't really use PayPal promoted like that, so it's going to be rough. So he did that with the medical fund. Then the other scam, that's why I put him on the list of scammers. The other scam that this man made was to say, I want to start something so we can pay for a billboard for this campaign in Mississippi. 
Remember that one? That makes a lot of sense. You want to campaign to take over the state of Mississippi and put up billboard signs in Mississippi saying, we're looking to take over Mississippi. Help us out. And he's not stepping foot in Mississippi. You know that was a scam. So, obviously, why did you need billboards in Mississippi? It was a scam. That's why. But his audience is so damn small, he can't even generate any goddamn money. The only people who would give him money are people who feel sorry for him. And people who don't realize that this man is a motherfucking con man. And a nut. But they'll realize it after a while. And like I said, the man copied off of a book. He wanted what somebody else had. He was jealous. And I called it out. Everything she did, he tried to emulate. Because he was pissed off and, and jealous. She got with Sionetta. He wanted to get with Sionetta, so but he couldn't because he's not charismatic. He has nothing to offer. So he tried to sabotage that, which happened. Then he manipulated her into talking shit about everybody else. Now he's manipulating this lady into talking shit about everybody else. History repeats itself. If this lady's half as smart as she claims to be, it should be pretty obvious. But it's not. She doesn't know the history of this guy. She doesn't know his scheme, his plan. But she thinks she does <clears throat> because she claims she has a beef with somebody else affiliated with the circle. So she wants to attack another lady. Well, I tell you what, if you were sincere about that, you would attack the other lady without defending this guy. You don't have to attack her and defend him because that's not making her claims invalid because you're defending him. That's helping him out. And that's not hurting her, but it's helping him. And he's the liar and the manipulator. Like I said, I evaluated the stories. I was in communication with this guy when he first got with her. And then she disappeared. You were not. And I would say some other stuff, but I don't want to go that deep. But, apparently it is a small world. But, I will say <laughs> I will say this. I don't know where you get the idea that this guy is somehow telling the truth. Even with the experiences that you've had with the guy so far. It should tell you that this guy doesn't like black women. He has a problem with everybody. You and that other guy, you're the end of the line for this guy. Everybody else woke up. Everybody, every female he has come in contact with, he tried to promote females, but he tried to manipulate them. The one deity, I liked her because even though she kept on coming back thinking that he was going to change like a lot of people, after a while, she finally woke up and said, this guy's an Uncle Tom house nigga. Maybe you'll wake up, maybe you won't. But if you if you really love black people, you wouldn't call people niggers. I know I did today because cause if you find what I'm talking about, then you'll see. Uh, you won't diss black people, you won't diss elders. You don't have to keep calling people out of their names to disagree with them. If you don't like the nation of Islam, that's fine. 
there's still ways to get your point across without being a ghetto hood rat. And you don't have to side with maniacs because you have developed a hatred for somebody else. If you truly love black people, you wouldn't have to have a hatred for somebody black. And if you disagree with the Nation of Islam mantras, that's fine. You explain it. But see, you can't explain it in an intellectual way with evidence. Damn, as I uh, make this video now, I see the alert that we back. <laughs> that should give you another hint. Uh, but... Be productive. Be respectful. You can be respectful and exciting at the same time. Being a stereotypical ghetto hood rat is not going to get it done. And uh, I would strongly advise you to get your act together if you're real. But obviously these people are not real. That's why I'm kind of falling back and I'll never be on that channel again. I'm going to let him manipulate you. I'm going to let him stick his dick in your mouth if that's what he wants to do. Uh, whatever it takes. Matter of fact, if he can get you out of some money, beat you out of some money, I'm, I'm going to let him do that. I learned a lesson a long time ago. You can try to talk to people, but once they're under the spell, they're just going to be under the spell. And you just got to let them Get whatever comes from them not wanting to listen. See, she thinks when I talk about them, I'm going against her. I'm going against her because she disrespected me just because I wanted to speak. But she doesn't want what I have to say to get out. But see, I got my channel, so it's getting out. But of course, I'm not dropping names because... You people don't need any publicity, but for people who know, they know. Matter of fact, hold up. Before I even get off, I got a email. Let's see if things change. Uh-oh. <laughs> Damn, right after I put this up. Okay, yeah, now she's accepting. Damn, I thought I just made all this. So, all right, so I'm going to still put this up. And she's going to come on. We're going to uh, talk about it. But so since that's the case, I'm going to end it now. See, now if she would have gotten back to me sooner. I wouldn't have made this. But <laughs> Well, I guess they get a double dose. So with that, I'm out.